Hey guys, it's Dave again, back again here in Dave's Dimension, back again for another video. We're trying some new things out today. Uh, after this past week, it was Amazon Prime Week, and it was also my birthday week, so I figured, okay, let's do some, well, let's do some buying. So what I did was, I actually jumped on a uh, budget webcam, so we're no longer using, we're no longer using the iPhone 11 for these videos, okay? So now we got this budget camera. I got it for about, I think about $30, $35 on Amazon. It's not a Logitech camera, which I know everyone is using between the 920s. And I think it's a 925 and of course the Brios. They didn't have any good deals on those. Um, I myself, I mean, I would love to be able to spend two, $300 to drop on a camera. Don't have it in my budget right now, guys. Okay, at least not right now. Okay, I also picked up a nice uh, new microphone with a condenser, condenser mic. This is by Toner, T O N O R, model T777. So that's, I think it's TC777. Uh, so trying it out. And of course, I also started, I uh, downloaded OBS, which stands for Open Broadcast support or service some, something like that it's an it's a free software for editing videos sounds so i got the mic routed into there we got the camera i adjusted some of the levels so you can see some of the colors in the background here nice wide angle view here but that's neither here nor there this i'm trying gonna try and keep this the standard for now um as you can see my room is well this room that i use for this is actually an all-purpose room you can see some bins and boxes in the back there, uh, storage. Uh, this is a spare bedroom in my my wife's apartment. Um, as you can see, this is also the section where I have all my collectibles and adult uh, adult collections, toys, figures, whatever you want to call it. I got the Power Ranger section, the Power Ranger and Necklace section on one side, Ghostbusters on the other. I have, of course, the RGB pack. The flux pack in the background. My pack is in the case I'm actually going to be taking out later to do some system testing. You can see a nice wider angle view. If you're wondering why I have monitors right here, this is actually my work computer. I'm actually a work at home uh, employee since this past, past March with everything that's going on with 2020. So please don't pay any attention to that. And I have some more issues because, well, I was having a late brunch. So, so that's what's going on um that's what these changes are tell me if you like them um i'm still getting used to having a microphone in front of me i know i have to talk a little closer to it so i'm going to be trying to get a, maybe a gimbal i have an old uh camera holder that uh i might kind of modify to work as a gimbal but uh we'll see what happens today's video is a big one in the past if you've watched our channel you've seen some of our videos you've heard me mention about BOK pack, known as Ben of Kent. Uh, those who are in the Ghostbuster community, uh, you should be no stranger to the Ben of Kent props. They make, uh, they're a company based in the UK. Awesome company, at least from my experience so far. Um, this is my first real project from them. Um, I bet you can reach them on Facebook. You can reach them on Etsy. Um, I messaged them. I said, I'm looking for my first full scale pack. You know, I I don't have a couple thousand dollars for the pack. What kind of options do you have for me? And he was really awesome. He said, "Well, what are you looking for? What are you looking to build? You know, do you need a wand? Do you need just a pack?" He worked with me on it. And roughly about maybe between maybe 8 or 900 dollars after everything's said and done. I have a full scale pack, which should arrive in another couple weeks. Um, a lot of the pieces are 3D printed. The shell is a full heavy duty shell, aluminum motherboard on the back. I even have, uh, he even set me up with an Alice frame to go with it and all the brackets, the hardware, everything. Okay. Now, some of the 3D, pre 3D pieces I've seen from other pack makers are not always the greatest. I'm one of those people, I'm Irish and Polish. So I'm a strong believer in Murphy's Law. If anything can go wrong, it definitely will, guys. So, 
What am I? What does that mean? Nothing against nothing against Ben and Kent's. I just I've been squirreling away extra pieces so that you know if the 3D piece that they have molded or printed, you know, if they some of the resin pieces can be a little bit more pricey, a little bit more expensive because it's you know cost and time. So depending on how well the pieces look, I actually went and got some real pieces, real components and pieces. So um, I've been squirreling away a box of components and supplies for when I actually build the Benekent. And this video is going to be me going over some of the pieces that I've already gotten, guys, okay? I'm sorry if the sounds, uh, I'm a little distant. Like I said, I got to get a proper piece for the microphone here. Right now I have it sitting on a cardboard box. So hopefully that sounds a little bit better, guys. Now, as always, you're going to need tons of painter's tape. Why did you need painter's tape? Because on the pack, it's not just flat black all over the pack. You, if you're doing a screen accurate, if you're trying to make it look as as top of line or as real as possible, you might, you might want to do texturing if that's your thing. I did texturing on my pack before. What do I mean by texturing? Well, it's not going to look smooth and flat. There's going to be some rough coarseness to it. Usually we see that around the cyclotron and a few other parts of the of the pack. So those parts that aren't going to have that coarseness, that texture to it, you're going to tape these up. Now, in I've worked with a lot of spirit pack guys, okay? Or spirit packs, I should say. Now, what I did on mine was I painted it an aluminum silver color for the base as a primer. I used the Rusty Oleum two times uh, primer paint. So I'll do a couple coats of that, maybe one or two coats. And then I'll do flat black. Again, about one or two coats, depending on how well it takes and your conditions painting. And then. I'll tape up those parts that I don't want to have the bed liner spray. And I just use basic Rust-Oleum bed, bed liner spray. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, you can buy it. You can go to a Harbor Freight or any hardware place and get the spray uh, bed liner and apply it to your pack. Maybe do one or two passes depending on how, how rough you want it. Okay? So that's where the painter's tape comes in. Okay, now also I got this on Amazon. What these are, in case you really can't see through the plastic, guys, are these are for your paints, your your spray paints. You pop the can right in, and it works like a regular paint gun, guys. So you can do nice even sprays. You're not holding the the spray can in your hand and getting the little. Uh, I don't know what you call it, the button part. It can kind of leave an imprint in your finger if you're holding it down. Sometimes it's a little uncomfortable. Now, one, two, three, you pop it in. A nice little gun. You got a trigger here. I got these as a two-pack. Very inexpensive. Very cheap. And, I mean, these are cheap. They're not meant to be used for five or six years. You can toss them afterwards. Okay, guys? It's something nice and easy. I got a two-pack that way. I can kind of switch between the different stuff. It's nice and easy. Or maybe you have someone else helping you. You know, there we go. So, what's our next contestant? Well, again, I have more painter's tape, guys. You can never have too much painter's tape. Uh, at least that's my opinion. So, what else do we have? Okay, this is the uh, metallic aluminum. This is what I happen to get because I prefer silver. That's just a preference of mine. I really love silver. I love the look of it. Um, now, you might be asking, why are you doing silver or aluminum? Because over time, your pack is going to take scrapes and scratches. This way, it gives it a natural weathering over time, guys. Okay? Um, I don't expect the bed liner to really scrape away. But the parts with the flat black, over time, maybe you drop your pack, you bang into something... It gives a nice natural scrape, uh, you know, it scrapes the paint off. You get a nice natural look to it, guys. Because, it, I mean, let's face it, the packs, Proton Packs have been around since 84. They're going to take some, some dings. They're going to take some beats. This way, it's a natural weathering over time. That's something I actually did on my uh, Carnivorous Creations 
oops, my Carnivorous Creations wand. And it's already, the paint's already scraping off of it. It's giving a nice weathered look to it. Now, here's the Rust-Oleum Bedliner Spray I was talking about, guys. This I actually have from about a year and a half ago when I did my Spirit Pack last year. I only used maybe, maybe a third. So I still have quite a bit in here. I might get another one just in case. I mean, one can this what I have in here should be plenty for the entire pack. And of course, here's the flat black rust oleum two times uh, primer. You want to get the ones that will adhere to metal, plastic, wood. Basically, it adheres to everything. This is great for all purpose stuff. I use this on my traps actually. I don't do. Um, I don't do a semi gloss or a, a satin black. I like the flat look to it, you know? That's just me. Now, what else do I have in here? Well, heat shrink. For all your internal wiring inside, um, I came across this. Uh, I mean, I did not know about this. I didn't know what this was. I didn't know it was a thing until a couple months ago. And I used it on my trap. Uh, to do the uh, Walmart trap for the wiring because I wanted to run an extended wire to an actual uh, heavy-duty foot pedal. It worked fantastic. This is amazing stuff. I cannot say this enough. I cannot stress it enough. Now, I got this at Harbor Freight. Once again, yes, I do buy a lot of stuff at Harbor Freight, guys. Um, I got this, and it comes with different sizes for different gauges of wiring. So, yeah. Awesome. You cannot go wrong with that. Now, the next thing. These are actually mounting posts for the inside. Because I'm going to be going with the GB Fans uh, sound kit and light kit. So I want to see if there's any way. I want to. I bought this. This is commonly used in uh, computers and other parts. But I want to use it to see if I can raise the soundboard up. But we'll see what happens with that. We'll see if it works out or not. Now, a couple other things I got. I mean, if you're building a proton pack, you need a re nice, reliable power pack. That's what I got here. This is actually made by Talent Cell. I use Talent Cell batteries in all my packs. Now, this is a nice. Now, in the past, I've gone with a bulkier, white, maybe a thicker version of it. This is nice and flat. This will mount to the pack. A uh, buddy of mine, I've actually seen a few people where they will tape it up and do some uh, hazard or caution tape look as far as painting on it. I don't know what I'm going to do with this just yet. But it has your basic AC power adapter. You got your light switch. You see your green lights right there showing your power level. So right now this is at 3 out of 4. So 75%. And there is a little nudge here. A little little uh, cover. You just open that up and that's going to be a USB port. Okay. So you can plug other devices into here. Uh, what other devices do you ask could you be putting in there well on my pack i plan to use a uh, bluetooth adapter that's going to plug into here for power and then it's going to have an aux cord that goes directly inside the pack to the wands or not to the wand but to the soundboard so i can play other tracks because gb fans uh, soundboard they have different modes for the different weapons from the video game or movie sounds uh, but it only allows you to play the Ghostbusters theme. Now you can go into the micro SD card, change out that theme for a different thing. Well, you're only able to still play one song on command. This way, Bluetooth to a tablet or cell phone, MP3, whatever the case. Now I can play multiple tracks. I can play higher and higher. I can play on our own. I can play music from the original uh, series, real Ghostbusters. There's a lot of different things we can do with that. Okay. Now. I have one, I have two speakers. Why do I have two speakers? Well, I didn't know I had this speaker before. I think this, I tried to use it in my spirit pack, but I couldn't fit it in. And this one was actually recommended by one of my uh, friends and teammates, uh, Justin Williams. Um, so he, he helped me out big time. He gave me the uh, link for that and also speaker cover it actually comes as a two-pack so um, 
I'm just planning on doing just the one speaker. I don't need two speakers in there. Can I fit two speakers in there? Yes, I will. Yes, I can, I should say. But I'm just going to go with this one. Because you don't want it to be humming too loud. Because if you're at an event, nobody's going to hear you then. I've had that problem before. <laughs> now, on my projects, I like to use hazard tape, the caution tape. Am I going to put this on my pack? I don't know yet. I'm tempted to, but I may just hold off for now. Okay? I have an extra power cell lens. I have extra cyclotron lenses from GB fans. Just in case the ones from Benekent get damaged or for some reason they don't come out looking that right. Just, just on an off chance. I've never order from Ben and Kent except for a wand hook before. That's the only thing I've ordered from them. So I had these extras before I started this project. I had these laying around. So it's always good to have extras in case you have a slip, you break something, you got extras. Now I have these nice cords. Um, you're going to use something like this in the GB fan soundboard. And it's good for detaching because then you have it connected to a wire that will jack into your power source. Okay. So these are nice. I got a bundle of these like two years ago from eBay actually. So I have a bunch of these. Uh, that way I can detach the power because I'm not going to be able to fit the uh, power battery. Well, I mean, a battery could fit inside, but I have the problem of not being able to have a power switch. Reason why is I am a novice when it comes to electrical. You know, taking a switch, taking some bare wires and connecting it. Um, I tried doing some testing because I have some toggle switches here. Um, tried connecting to a harness. It wasn't working that well. It could turn on or it will turn, turn on, turn off, and then it won't turn back on again. So I'm just going to go with the tried and true hitting using the battery's power switch as the main power for the pack and then triggering it with the wand so that's the method I'm gonna go with at least for right now unless something else comes along now what else do I have well I have the wire that will bridge the connection between the uh, soundboard and the GB fans light setup this is GB fans power cell and cyclotron kit that does come with the vent lights that's what I'm gonna be using for the pack um, I tend to go GB fans because I'm a very plug and play kind of kind of person. Um, buddy of mine recently succeeded in adding an aux cord to his Spangler one. I kind of want to try that. I'm a little scared because, like I said, I'm a novice at this. So we'll see what happens. Now, I also have plastic weld. Uh, buddy of mine, Phil Beath, um, put me onto this. It's basically like plumber's putty. So if you have an accident, maybe you accidentally drill something or you need to fill in a hole, this is some awesome stuff. It's made by JB Weld. Uh, make sure you have some gloves on when you're working with this stuff, guys. You can have some reactions, so be careful. Now, here is, well, here's my talent cell box, but I'm using this for storage because I have a nice GB fans crank knob wires for my battery and of course the sound board from gb fans i have it right here um if you notice there's a little extra wire in here because i put in i took some speaker wire because i did a live test you always want to do a live test before you really complete you know start getting into your project i mean i'm still waiting a few weeks out for the prep for the pack to arrive so I have all my electronics. I said, what the hell, let's try and test it out. And I also went between several speakers before I found which one was working the best for me. So there's that. Um, if you're working with wires, at some point, you're going to need to pull out some of the protective coating. So I have some wire cutters, crimpers right here. I have more tools I'll be using. Now... I also have a miscellaneous box. Okay. 
this is what I use to hold all my loose missing pieces. Now, I had ordered a metal V-hook just in case whatever comes with the pack doesn't work that well. Um, and when I was going through all my uh, junk, I actually came across two more V-hooks. So I have uh, three pairs of V-hooks right there, guys. You can never have too much. And also I have... A I recommend everyone keeps a little container of junk stuff because you never know what can come in handy. I got a ton of screws. I have trap components in here. Transistors. And this just came in. I got the uh, ribbon clamp from GB Fans. Just in case, you know, the one from Ben and Kent's, if there's any accents, I, like I said, I believe in extras. I believe in having backups. If I don't have a backup, then I'm waiting and waiting before I can complete it. So it just works out better that way. Now, you hear me talk about just in case some of the pieces for the pack don't look that great. Well, I got the real transistor parts for the pack. Hold on. It's always great when a Ziploc bag is not opened all the way or it's opened and things are falling out. I got these through GB uh, GB eight uh, was it GBHQ Parts Depot on Etsy. He is based out of Jamestown, New York, and he ships lightning fast. I cannot recommend him enough. I mean, these are the real transistors. These are not molded 3D pieces. These are the real deal, my friends. I also ordered the little. Uh, barb pieces for connecting the hose. These are, these are the real metal ones. Because uh, I actually used these on my spirit pack. Yeah, I replaced all the original ones and put these in there. So. And I have the smaller barb pieces, as you can see there, with their little grommets. Also, I have an extra potentiometer. You don't know what that is that's what you use to adjust volume so i have one of these and um, we're going to hook it up to the i know the soundboard already comes with one but this way i can run a long extended cord and we can actually post this right into the um, pack shell itself so that way i can actually use the knob as an actual control or we may wire it to the back of the uh the actual back of the motherboard so I can just kind of reach behind and adjust the volume that way so that's another thought here's the other elbow legris so I have these here so you know I got these pieces just as an extras um, if I if I use them fantastic if not we'll see what happens I'm always making some other you know if I do another spirit pack we'll uh maybe use it for that so it's always good to have the extras you know in woodworking there's a saying measure twice cut once that's what you want to do so those are most of the components what else do i have well i had this this is actually a uh, disc aluminum disc printed and shows proton pack Positron Collider. So I might mount this somewhere on uh, the back of the pack. And for labels, what am I doing for labels? Well, I know Ben and Kent sends labels, but a buddy of mine threw me on to um, Mac Factory. You can look them up on eBay. Now, these are not your typical labels, guys. These are not, you know, your typical s sticker set. This goes well beyond it. They they even send you a manual on how to apply everything, guys. That's how that's how serious a set this is. They give you different decals. 
for the clippers, depending on if you're using a real one or if you 3D printed resin cast. Uh, these are right on 3, 3M, so you know it's going to be a nice, durable connection here. Now, obviously you can see that this these are decals because they can bend. What does not bend are these guys. These are aluminum labels here. So, and you can see right there, you can see how thick those are and how how much they stand out. These are the real deals. This is what you need if you're doing a screen accurate pack. I mean, when I saw these, I was like, okay, I did not make a mistake on these. I definitely made the right choice. So, I mean, I could not be happier with the labels there. Now, that's what I have right now, guys. That is where we are with our supplies for the road to the BOK. Now, I can't wait to get it. I'm probably going to pick up another can of uh, black just to be safe. Because it all depends on how well... And, I mean, if you've ever put a pack together or trap, you know that once you put your primer on, you want to make sure it's it takes it takes time to cure, and you want to make your make sure that everything is just right. I mean, I'm this is my first full scale pack, so you know I'm going to be trying to be as careful as possible. And a good friend of mine always says, when you're painting a prop, whether it's a trap or you know maybe a statue or you know you're modding a toy or an old collectible you want to tell a story now obviously if you're going to do weathering you don't want to you know what weather it in spots that would never be scratched or damaged right you want to you know you assume okay if you're wearing a pack you're turning around maybe you scraped it against a wall or a door frame things of that nature if you're going to weather it weather it in a sense like okay there's a nice scrape not the whole panel is going to be scraped. So maybe just a, a light edge or something, you know, things like that. Um, my buddy Phil is always saying, tell a story with your props. And truer words have never been spoken, really, guys. So um, that's everything I have right now. Now, I ordered the Ben Kent pack. I think it was around um, August, sometime in like mid to late August. Um now, obviously, it takes some time to make the actual, make the shells, make the components, make the pieces, include all the pieces. Uh, this pack is going to include the ribbon cable, uh, the mounting hardware for inside, for the electronics. It's going to have everything basically there. I got these pieces because I want to have backups in case something doesn't look right or maybe there, there's there's a flaw or something got damaged during shipping, guys. I mean, let's be honest, this is coming over from, over from England, and of course, I mean, they, if you ask anyone, and people are going to tell you Ben and Kent is the best, BOK is the best. Um, one of my buddies had built a Ben and Kent kit, and I saw it, I'm like, this looks amazing, I want, I want one. And then I found myself in a situation where I could actually afford to do so. Um, and it's taking it's taking a while because one they had to make it and two they have to ship it from United Kingdom England all the way over here to the states and of course with everything going on there's customs there they have their wait time before they can ship internationally and then of course it arriving here in the states as far as I know it it is in the states it's being prepped to be handed off to the current carrier at some point this week to be shipped out to me now i'm in grand island new york which is only about eight to nine hours away from new york city so i'm hoping to get this by some time not this coming week but the week after um it would be great if it did um but we'll see what happens Wh whatever the case uh, is i'm going to be doing regular updates on this now of course once it hits the states it has to hit our customs there's a wait time where they have to make sure everything is perfectly fine. They have to inspect it because it's going to be a large box, guys. It's going to have a full-size uh, shell in it. It's going to have the motherboard, the Alice frame, and all the various parts for the pack itself. So, obviously, 
they're going to want to expect, inspect something that's that big. And even in the x-ray, they're going to see some wires and tubes in there. They're going to want to see what's going on. So, I mean, you got to give us some time, guys. So, as of right now, what am I using for the wands, in case you're wondering? Um, I'm undecided, actually. I have a uh, Carnivorous Creations uh, wands with a GB Fans uh, light kit inside. Um, however, um had a little problem with that wand. It was nice and sturdy and perfect when I first put it together. And now there, uh, there's a little loose piece. And the only way I see fixing it is if I take the wands completely apart from the gun box itself. We're talking about the front barrel to the where it connects into the gun box itself. It's a bit loose. The only way I see to really fix that would be some epoxy. But I don't want to completely take it apart to fix it. I could. Um, but then I don't have a functional wand unless I use the... I don't... You probably can't see right now. But I have a Spangler wand on the top shelf up there. I actually have two Spanglers. So I could just simply rig one up to a loom. And connect it into the pack. It won't have control over the pack. But I'll have a wand that works... And I could do that. That is an option. The other option is, depending on how well this Benekent uh, pack turns out, I may just order a Benekent wand and we'll do more videos on building that, maybe. So, that's what's pretty much is going on, guys. So, what do you guys think? Uh, am I going overboard on preparation? Or uh, do you think I'm just about right? Or, hey, if you guys are watching this video... If you have a suggestion, if you think I'm missing a piece or two, you think maybe I should have a certain tool, tell me. Let me know. I already got some self-threading drill bits here for some of the parts. Uh, that was something else uh, my buddy Justin had used for his pack. Of course, I have drills. We have other, other tools here. Um, but it's I'm, I'm excited. I'm very stoked. Uh, can't wait for it to arrive. Um... What have you? What was some of the steps that you guys may have done? Do you have any opinions or thoughts or concerns? Some suggestions to help me do a better job? Please leave them in the comment section below. Whether they're positive or negative, it's all about improving the quality of these videos and also the projects. You know, I mean, all it takes is one one mistake and maybe I mess up the shell or maybe wiring with the soundboard. I actually learned a lesson on my spirit pack. Uh, my current spirit pack, I actually did the GB fans, lights, and sound inside. Um, I made the mistake of trying to glue. Uh, and when I mean glue, I'm really meaning like epoxy the soundboard into the shell itself. I was trying to get the knob to work and it didn't really work out. Lesson learned on my end. <laughs> but that's why I have the potentiometer now. Um, as far as the lights... I like the GB Fans lights. Um, I am going to be ordering, uh, or rather I'll go to the dollar store and buy some cheap uh, flashlights so I can take the reflectors out. So I can use those to help with the cyclotron lights. So that is something I have done before. Um, I do have a question for anyone out there who's built a pack. Um, I've seen a lot of times the lenses are perfectly clear and you can see the individual LEDs as they're going up. Now, I've seen some people who, I believe they've done like a light sand paper rubbing against the inside of the lens to kind of blur it out so it looks a little bit more like the movie. Um, if anyone's done this successfully, please let me know. Leave a link, if you can, uh, in the comments section or message me in the comments section below. I would really love to see what is the correct process for that. Like I said, this is my first full-scale pack, guys. So... There we are. That is this is episode one to the road of the road to the Benekent pack. So until next time, this is Dave from Dave's Dimension saying keep on busting, and I'll catch you on the flip side.